Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to another video uh, for ELE424 Analog Electronics 1. Under the topic Bipolar Junction Transistors, we are at DC biasing circuits and the previous video was on uh, the simplest configuration which was the fixed bias circuit. We are now ready to go on to the next configuration which is the emitter stabilized um, bias uh, for the BJT DC biasing. Okay, I am Wan Fazli Dahanim Abdullah. I'm from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, UITM Shah Alam. So this lecture will be referring to the uh, previous uh, video, which is the DC bias fixed bias lecture. Please study that topic first. Topics covered in BJT DC biasing as a whole, uh, which covers uh, several videos. I suspect it will be about three or four videos in total. The uh, topics in the previous set of slides, so in the previous video, was uh, why DC biasing was required and the fixed bias circuit configuration. For today, we will uh, look at the emitter stabilized bias. And for the following lectures, we will be, we will be covering voltage divider bias, collector feedback bias, emitter follower bias, and common base bias. And the presentation approach for this um, uh, these topics would be this lecture will present and analyze a circuit perhaps the simplest as an example for each of the categories covered here okay and the analysis techniques used is the same in fixed bias configuration uh, and we will consider the input loop and then the output loop involving KVL and maybe sometimes other loop now other circuit analysis theorem as necessary uh, we will be considering saturation values and maximum rating limitations that should be avoided as we go along as well okay again before we go on to the circuit analysis of the electronic uh, circuits uh, structure, um, it's very important to understand why uh, we do certain things. So why is there a need for different DC biasing circuits? So BJTs are known to be sensitive to temperature, causing the current behavior to be different than what it had been designed for if you're talking about BJT as an amplifier because we know that BJT has to be biased at an operating point that is a specified target and we don't want it to change so to improve sensitivity and stability some modifications need to be done to the fixed bias circuit that we covered in the previous video the previous video was the simple fixed bias circuit that we have at the top right here and then what we're going to do um, uh, throughout the uh, this video and the future videos will be first that we'll be adding a resistor uh, at the emitter and then we'll be de uh, adding another resistor between the base um, and the ground and then uh, later on we'll have a look at what happens if we do a resistor from the base to the collector okay um, there are also requirement for the BJT to be connected in different configurations such as driving load with higher current instead of amplifying the input signal uh, and we'll be looking at configurations like the emitter follower and the common base so there was a question from one of the students in the last tutorial. This, uh, he said that uh, if BJTs are so sensitive to temperature, can you, use it, can you use it as a sensor to sense temperature? Yes, you can, but that is not the scope of this uh, slide. The scope of this slide is we want to use BJT as an amplifier, uh, amplifying device, and we would like to have the Q point to be stabilized. So our next... Um, but DC bias configuration uh, circuit is the emitter stabilized bias. We have covered fixed bias. We are now going on to emitter stabilized. And it is just like the fixed bias configuration, but with an added emitter resistor. So what's the issue with the fixed bias circuit again? Back to the basics. The purpose of a DC biasing circuit is to ensure current and output voltages of Q point is set at a specified value. Okay, meaning that the Q point should remain where it is specified even though there are unintended changes in other uh, parameters. Unintended changes means, um, it's for example, change in temperature. Okay, So beta, for example, is a par parameter that var varies with temperature. If beta, beta changes, so does IC and VCE. And we don't want that to happen. So we would like, uh, if the temperature changes, even the beta changes because you can't actually um, uh, do much with that because that's the uh, transistor characteristics unless you're into the uh, designing of BJT. But we, here we are using the BJT and um, we would like to see how we can um, eliminate changes and effect on IC and VCE even though beta changes. 
A DC bias circuit with good stability is a circuit that is less sensitive to temperature and other parameter variation that are not intended. Okay. So fixed bias circuit Q point that we found in the previous uh, video that we studied in the previous video is highly affected by beta variation. Even though it did amplify but it was highly affected by beta variation. So it needs to be improved in terms of stability so that the Q point becomes less sensitive to changes in beta. Okay, I hope that's clear. We want to have a circuit that is more stable uh, with uh, temperature changes or beta changes. So the circuit, how does it look like? Introducing the emitter stabilized bias circuit. Okay, you have emitter here, a res emitter resistor connected from the emitter terminal to the ground. And why do we add the res uh, emitter resistor? So RE is added to improve the stability level over that of the fixed bias configuration. We mentioned this again and I'm repeating myself again and again. Okay, so with the emitter resistor, what changes can it do? Now our analysis approach is still the same. So meaning first from this uh, given uh, amplifier circuit where we have uh, RB, RC and RE with the BJT and the AC coupling capacitors, we will um, first draw the DC equivalent circuit just as we did before with the capacitors replaced with an open circuit. Okay, because the reactance would be zero, because frequency would be zero on the DC, so this will be an open circuit. And this would be how the DC equivalent circuit looked like. I have purposely um, included my own uh, writing here just to uh, demonstrate that every time that you are given any, if you're going to do this on pen and paper approach, you know, just for intuition um, analysis before you carry on with the circuits. Um, it's doable. It's not that difficult. Okay. So the approach taken in the next few steps after we've drawn the DC equivalent circuit is just the same as the fixed by circuit. First, we do the input loop and then we do the output loop. The input loop is analyzed for expression relating to the input current IB. That's the purpose of the input loop. And the output loop is analyzed for expressions relating to IC and VCE. Analysis of the input loop. So from the DC equivalent circuit, the input loop is analyzed for the expression of input parameters, particularly IB. Again, I'm repeating there. So we draw the input loop, okay, consisting of VCC, RB, VBE, and RE. And if I do a KVL around this loop, I get negative VCC plus IBRB from Ohm's law plus VBE and we know that if it's silicon PN junction VBE is about 0 0.7 volts unless stated otherwise in the question or in the situation plus IERE Ohm's law again which represents the voltage drop across the RE. So now um, different from the fixed bias we have a voltage drop across the RE. And we know also that IE is equals to IC plus IB if we treat the BJT as um, as a node uh, and we do a KCL at the BJT node. So um, we get this expression um, and we also know that the transistor characteristics of BJT is IC equals to beta IB. So these uh, points will be used again and again and if I replace IE which is equals to beta plus 1 IB because of this IC being replaced in the expression above, I get this expression IB is equals to VCC minus VBE divided by RB plus beta plus 1 RE. And if we look at this, this looks, this is actually Ohm's law because you have I equals to V over R. Okay, another way of looking at this also is, um, I'm just drawing here, you don't have to do both ways, it's just an alternative approach, it's based on which one you're more comfortable with. Okay, if it's a simple circuit, you can always say uh, that the total voltage drop across several elements uh, in series will be equal to the total voltage drop uh, across it, which is in this case VCC, is equals to VRB plus VBE plus VRE. You can also visualize it this way. So when you do this and you still do KCL or BJT and the expression for IC equals to beta IB representing the BJT um, common emitter amplification uh, parameter, you can rearrange and still get the same expression. So it doesn't matter where you use it, whether you use it this way or uh, the previous way. But because um, 
I have been uh, starting the lectures using KVL. I shall stick with the KVL method, but you can use it in any way uh, um, that is uh, convenient for you. Based on the expression for base current IB, uh, let's make some observations. First, now expression for IB has the terms beta and RE added in the denominator compared to the fixed bias configuration. So previously, IB was set by RB and RB only for the resistance. But now with the emitter bias, um, our IB is set by not only RB but also by RE uh, multiplied by the factor of uh, beta plus 1. Okay, and beta comes from the transistor. So notice that RE now even though you're just adding an RE compared to the fixed bias, but RE appears to be a great deal larger when seen from the input loop by a factor of beta plus 1. And beta is a large value, um, typically around 50, maybe up to 200, 300. So we can consider R in here is added in series to the base emitter loop representing the emitter base junction and RE is seen from the terminal where R in is equals to beta plus 1 uh, times RE. Okay, so it's like reflected back uh, by uh, to the input loop by a factor of beta plus 1 times RE. So now analysis of the output loop. We've done with, we're done with the input loop. We will now want to look at the output loop. And the output loop is analyzed for expressions uh, relating to the output parameters IC and VCE. We redraw the circuit. Compared to the fixed bias, we now have an added RE. So if we do KVL around this loop, we get v, uh, VCC minus IERE minus VCE minus ICRC equals to zero. And if we do an approximation of IE is approximately equals to IC, because when we did um, the BJT device, we said uh, IC is um, uh, related to IE by a factor of uh, alpha, which is very close to 1, remember? So, and we rearrange this expression with IE approximated to be uh, equal to IC. Um, we have this expression VCE equals to VCC minus ICRE minus RCRC. Now, some of you may be wondering, can we just ignore IB just like that? Well, um, we mentioned earlier that uh, IB is in the range of micro ampere and IC is in the range of milliampere. So uh, mathematically, uh, to make things easy here, we can we can um, uh, approximate IB uh, to be negligible in our expression here. Okay. So some observations again from this expression. Let's see what we can observe here. Now the presence of RE reduces VCE compared to fixed bias okay? because earlier in fixed bias. Um, um, VCE uh, has the expression of VCC and um, ICRC only without the RE. But now we've, uh, we have to uh, subtract the expression for RE as well. So all expressions of VB, which is the voltage at the node uh, of the base terminal, and VC, uh, which is the collector terminal, are not the same as VBE and VCE anymore because VE is now not connected to ground, directly to ground. So if you say VB is going to be VB minus VE and VE has a value which is equals to IE times RE. Load line. Okay, so from the KVL of the output loop, just like the fixed bias approach, when we have an expression uh, of IC versus v, uh, VCE in, an, um, in the same expression that we got from the KVL of the output loop, the load line linear equation can be written and superimposed to the BJT output characteristics family of curve axis IC versus VCE. And we can write this expression. This is the family of curves that we're saying. IC versus VCE and from the expression of the emitter um, uh, collector uh, output loop okay we have this expression of VCE which is equals to VCC minus IC times RE plus RC we can write this, write this in the form of uh, Y equals to MX plus C or AX plus BY plus C whichever that you're more comfortable with they're all the same anyway so Y intercept is VCC divided by RC plus RE, now with the emitter bias, and the x-intercept is now VCC. 
So some observations compared to the fixed bias configuration. Now the value of the y-intercept is now smaller with the presence of RE. Because um, earlier it was just VCC divided by RC. But now um, RC is added to RE. But that's not uh, too much of an issue here. Compared to the advantages that the emitter bias uh, can give us. So let's have a look at the saturation level. Okay, saturation level is the value because um, I'll go back a slide. We know that we want to operate in the active bias region. Okay, in the active region, uh, we do not want to operate in the saturation region here because there will be distortion to the amplify uh, to the amplification to the amplified signal. Okay, so an estimation of IC set of the Q point in the saturation region. Okay, because we want to find that. Uh, saturation value can be done by estimating VCE set as approximately equal to zero. Okay, so VCE set we know is small, so it is shifted. We, we can say it is approximately equal to zero. Okay, this is just like the fixed bias treatment, and um, if it's close to zero, okay, and if we look at this output loop, it's going to be uh, the voltage drop across RC plus uh, VCE that we estimate equals to zero. We know that VCE is not equal to zero, but the case here is that we are saying that if it is, if it is saturated, it is very close to it be to uh, to be equal to zero. So it we estimate it to be equal to zero, and the voltage drop uh, across RE. And if we do KVL around this loop, or we estimate the total voltage drop across here. Uh, we get this expression for IC set, which is equals to VCC over RC plus RE. Okay, here, yeah. this is what I mean by the total voltage drop. VCC is equals to the voltage drop across VRC plus zero because this is an estimation of the set case in saturation and VRE. And we say that IE is approximately equals to IC and in this case IC is IC set. So we have this expression and we can rewrite write it in the form of IC set here. So if, I, if we draw this, this is actually the um, uh, y-intercept of the load line. Okay, VCC divided by RC plus RE. This value, we want to find it because we want to avoid it. This value is avoided for active region operation for the load line. And each load line okay we'll set rc and re so if you have different values for rc and re you'll have different values of ic set okay addition of re also reduces ic set compared to fixed bias configuration using the same rc as stated uh, previously okay we are now ready to handle an example this example gives you an emitter stabilized bias configuration with base resistance at 430 kilo ohm, collector resistance at 2 kilo ohm, and emitter resistance at 1 kilo ohm. We are required to find IB, IC, VCE, VC, VE, VB, and VBC, which is related to the quiescent point, and we want to check IC against the saturation level of IC set. If we set um, the biasing circuit with this resistor values and this VCC, will it cause um, the BJT to be um, in active region of operation or will it be in saturation? Okay, I have just this I know this is very small we'll have a look at each of the section part by part but I just want to show that if I were to do this on paper and you know, you know, if I want to do just scribble it for my intuition um, this is how it's going to look like it's not very long uh, to do the analysis it's not that difficult if you know what you're doing uh, step by step okay the first part would be to analyze the input loop so I've redrawn the input loop and we do a KVL here okay and if I do the KVL here and um, I get this expression negative VCC plus IBRB plus VBE plus IERE equals to zero and we know that the KCL of the uh, KCL if we do KCL at the BJT as a node I get this expression IE is equals to IC plus IB um, in this case I'm not going to ignore IB because it is an expression of IB that we want to find okay and I allow IC to be equals to beta 
uh, IB. So I got this expression IE is equals to beta plus 1 IB. Um, and rearranging this, I'll get the expression of IB, which was what we got earlier, but because um, uh, you know these expressions for voltages and current, it depends on the circuit architecture. So there's just no point in memorizing each current and voltage expression. It's always safer to go to do a KCL, KVL for each of the circuit. At least uh, you can do it um, very quickly because it's not a difficult theorem to apply, not a difficult um, rule to uh, apply. And then you get this expression for IB and the value for IB with these values of resistance that is given, which is 430 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm, IB is set at 40.1 microamps. Then using the transistor characteristics, IC equals to beta IB because beta is given. Uh, in this case, beta is given to be 50. Okay, Based on the value of uh, base current that we got, which is 40 microamps, 40.1 microamps, we get the value of IC to be 2.01 milliamps. So now we are ready to analyze the output loop knowing IC. Output loop again, we'll just redraw the output loop and do a KVL and we get this expression um, from VCC minus IERE minus VCE minus ICRC equals to zero uh, and rearranging we get this expression for VCE and we put in the values for VCC equals to 20 volts IC which is, which is equal to 2.01 milliamp which we found and RE plus RC which are the values that are given um, at um, uh, 1 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm um, we get this value 13.97 volts for VCE. And then now once we know what VCE is, okay, uh, to find VC, uh, VE and VB, all we need to do is just uh, Ohm's law and the voltage should drop across an element. So VCE is equals to VC minus VE. Okay, where VE is equals to IERE when we do Ohm's law. Uh, and we get VE to be equals to 2.01 volts and VC using the value of VCE that we found which was 13.97 we got it to be at 15.98 volts alternatively you can also look at Ohm's law for the voltage across uh, RC which is VCC minus VC which is equals to ICRC you get the same value I've just put it in green because you don't have to do both ways one is fine mm, and then you can find VB uh, to be equals to um, a 2.71 volts uh, based on the fact that VBE is a known value of 0 0.7 and VE was found to be at 2.01 okay so we get this value here um, what we want to point out from this example is that we get VBC which is equals to VB minus VC is equals to 2.71 volts for the base voltage minus VC which is 15.98 volts so we get a negative value for neg uh, VBC negative 13.27 volts uh, is this what we want so the answer is yes we want the negative value for a uh, base collector junction because this would mean that the base collector junction is reversed bias remember that for active region operation emitted base is forward biased and if it's fault bias, we've already set it to be at 0 0.7 volts. But the collector base junction is reverse bias. And based on this fact, we can uh, say that so far the active region requirement is fulfilled. Now let's check on the saturation level. Uh, estimating, if it's saturating, we estimate VCE to be equal to 0. In this uh, example, previously, we found that VCE was 13.97 volts. But if it is saturating, we assume it to be very close to zero. Um, so approximately equals to zero. So we get VCC to be equals to IC set RC plus zero plus IC set RE. And we get this value IC set to be 6.67 milliamps. In our case, our ICQ for this example was found to be 2 milliamps so we can safely say that the saturation level is avoided we have done uh, the example just now uh, so now let's have a look at uh, effect of uh, adding emitter resistance because 
uh, earlier when we started this video, uh, we said that I said that um, the purpose of the emitter resistor is to stabilize the circuit against um, changes in beta. So let's have a look. Effect of adding emitter resistance, and we stated that with RE, Q point is less sensitive to changes that are not intended, such as temperature and associated change in beta. Can we demonstrate this? Yes, we can. Based on our previous example, we can actually change the value of beta, purposely change it um, to represent a situation where it changes with temperature. And then we can measure the uh, corresponding uh, IC and VCE. So comparing how I and V changes when beta changes due to temperature changes. Let's have a look at the fixed bias circuit first. With the fixed bias, Okay, if you look at our previous example at page 15 from the previous set of slides, if you change beta from 50 to 100, you will find that uh, IC will also change from 2.35 to 4.71. So that's about 100%. IC changes 100% due to 100% change in the value of beta. IB remains the same uh, because IB is set by RB, uh, but IB, IC will... Um, change accordingly to beta because it is directly uh, equal to beta and yet beta remains the same. So VCE uh, will also decrease and it decreases by 76%. But what happens if we have an emitter stabilized bias, IC changes by 81%. Okay, it increases when beta increases from 50 to 100, which is a change of 100%. IC changes from 2.01 to 3.63 milliamps, so that's about 81% of uh, collector current change when beta changes by 100%. And the value of IB here changes with beta slightly as well because IB now has a factor of beta as well in its expression because of the... Um, uh, presence of RE and VCE instead of uh, decreasing by a factor of 76% in fixed bias it now decreases by 35% so this is the effect of including RE into your DC bias circuit let's have a look at another example okay in this example okay we are given a circuit but we don't know what the value of RB is and we would like to know what RB should be to get um, um, a desired uh, base resistance of uh, 15 microamps to a value of um, quiescent point that is set by this output loop. So first, it wants us to draw the load line for the network. Um, for the transistor appearing in this uh, schematics. Oh, this is example 4.7. This is from the text uh, ball step. Okay. Uh, this, the whole video lecture here follows uh, the flow in ball step. So once you've drawn the load line, going back to the circuit, for a Q point at the intersection of the load line, okay, we want, we have, we know that we want base current of 15 microamps. So we are asked to find the Q point, ICQ and VCQ. And based on that, we are asked to find DC beta because maybe beta is different in other parts of the circuit here, of the output characteristic. So at that particular point for beta DC, we want to know what the beta is if the base current is 15 microamps uh, intersecting with this load line. So with that value of beta, using the beta for the network determined in part C, um, we need to calculate the required value of RB here because in this case, we already have an expression for RE. Okay, if I know uh, IB, which is 15 microamps, which is given, I cannot directly set RB because now RB has a factor of beta. So I need to have the value of beta to be able to set the value of um, IB. Okay, so th this is what we're going to do. We'll draw the load line first. And the load line will have a Y intercept and X intercept um, based on RC and RE. And based on that, we'll find a Q point because we know that we are given 15 microamps. We'll find the Q point IC and VCE. And once we find the Q point, we can find the expression for beta from knowing that IC is equal to beta IB. So because this beta ICQ okay, divided by 15 microamps will give me beta. And then from that, I can do KVL of input loop to find expression of IB, which we know has um, the term RB, beta, and RE. So let's do this, uh, the solution now. 
Okay, so for the first part, we have the DC equivalent circuit. What are we looking for? We want to draw the load line. Okay, load line comes from the output loop. Expression for the load line gives us the Y intercept and X intercept. Okay, so from the values of RC and RE and VCC that is given, we can draw the um, load line, which is this black uh, straight line here. Okay, VCC equals to 18 volts here, and IC equals to 5.545 milliamps, which is this value here of the Y intercept. And from the load line, we know that IP is 50 microamps, so we'll find this intersection point, point of intersection, which is this Q point here. So I get IC, uh, the question point, ICQ to be 3.3 milliamps, and VCEQ to be 7.5 volts. Okay. And beta, when ICQ is 3.3 milliamps and uh, beta, uh, base current is 15 microamps, beta is going to be equal to 220. Now, knowing beta is equal to 220, now let's set IB because IB is going to be an expression that has RB, RE and beta from analyzing of the input loop. So you can't go wrong. You analyze the input loop, you analyze the output loop, and you use the fact that IC is equal to beta IB. Okay, but in this example, we had to do the output loop first, uh, then only do the input loop. Okay, so um, we put in the necessary values because beta was found to be 220, and RE is the value that is given, which is 1.1 kilo ohm. VCC is given to be 18 volts. VBE we know is 0 0.7. Uh, volts. So we want to find um, RB because IB is set at 15 microamps and we find that RB should be 910 kilo ohms. So this is the example um, for emitter bias in setting the value of RB if beta is not known. So we have now uh, ended uh, the topic, the subtopic emitter stabilized bias configuration. Our next topic will still be on DC biasing circuit but we will now look at voltage divider bias which provides uh, better stability compared to emitter stabilized bias. Thank you.